Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today on photometric lighting. To start up with, this is the scene, how it looks like, just rendering with one spotlight. To illustrate the problem, first I have to emit photons so we can see what's going to happen with that. So I'm just emitting photons in the light and of course enabling global illumination to capture these photon emission. And let's go to the light itself and drop it density to zero so we know there's no light information coming beside the fact that it has photons. Okay, so we start to see here blotchiness around the walls and uh, due to the sizes of the global illumination photons that need to be readjusted for the scale and the merge distance. The solution with photometric lighting is we'll take the guesswork out of this. So let's see how that will work. So I'm just going to keep this image for future comparison. And we're going to go to the hypershade and in the mentor ray lights, we're going to get the Mia photometric light. Let's go back to my light here and I'm going to go of course adjust and insert it under the custom shader for both light and photon. So you want to make sure that to have the same node in both two the render and now we're getting black images like as if there's nothing happening. This is happening to you to a couple of things. First of all the intensity mode here it's mode not intensity value so it's mode you have 0, 1 and 2. When it's 0 it says use the intensity light candela which is the first one here and if you see the candela is here set to zero that means there's nothing so let's give it a value of 10 these value will depend on your size uh, and your scene size so you might need to adjust these values according to your scene a recording should capture here there's a faint illumination starting to happen so obviously i need to increase this and now we're starting to see the scene better From here to here, all the blotchiness that we used to have, all of a sudden, they're all gone. And you have more naturalistic lighting in your scene. So let's explore more. I'm just going to go here on and off. This is obviously it's a simple on and off switch of the node. A multiplier, exactly like this name says, it multiplies the value by according to that number. So now you can see here there's more bright twice as much because we have multiplied it by 2. Let's give it back to one. The color can obviously change. The good thing is you can still add the MIB CIED as your color value. So this is white value. So this may drop it to something that we know is going to be non-white. All right. So you can adjust that as well by using the color temperature. But we don't need that for now. So I'm just going to disable that. Let's go back to the original here for a second. And I think I made it black by when I disconnected it. So that's why it came out black. So this intensity mode, again, it's a mode, not value, to enable the candela if it was 0. If it was 1, see what's going to happen. It's going to be black because it will enable the overall flux, which is here, in this case, is 0. So obviously, I need to increase that. Let me drop this to 0 because we're not using it just for sake of simplicity. And here it is, starting to come out very faintly. I can go now to the multiplier if I want. And you can start seeing it coming out again. Again, I'm not using the multiplier. I just want to show you that the mode will affect the flux. Give it the value of 1,000 here. And you can start seeing it coming out clearly. So this 0 for candela, 1 for flux. What if you put 2 here? If I render it, it will come out black. Because 2 is controlling the color or the light profile. And since we don't have anything in here, we need to create one. And of course, uh, you can choose the, uh, the format. For this case, I'm going to use an IES. An IES light profile can be downloaded from various sources. One site I'm familiar with is the erco.com. You can just download Let's say, for example, an outdoor lighting, illumination, and you have different type of lights if you kind of have uh, indoors as well. So you can download that, or you can go to other sites that also provide light profiles. So you can just explore with that. For that, I'm just going to grab one of mine. All right, if I were to render now, 
it will still come out black even though that the intensity mode is specifically for the light profile but just to prove that it is there and here you see it one thing that you need to remember with light profiles uh, my light is a little bit further away from the the character so you need to make sure it comes a little bit closer for it to come out or again of course uh, use the multiplier if you wish to I'm not going with the artistic look here but rather explaining the node on what parameter does what in it so let's not judge me on the lighting skills here <laughs> alright so we already explored that portion the distribution zero means this light will be behave as an isotropic meaning that the light will shine in all directions equally when the distribution mode is set to one it will tell the light to act as a spotlight which requires it to have a spread parameter but since my light is actually a spotlight so I already have that parameter embedded so once I render this you'll see now it will have a cone defined in here when the distribution mode now to 2 it will drive it from the light profile let's render it but just bear in mind here I multiplied this to 100 so that might be overkill which it is so let's bring this to 1 and this is a pre presentation for my actual light so let me just put this to 0.5 so I just have a better lighting in here okay the other portion which is the units to meter scale Mentor Ray like to work with real world unit so in this parameter it will tell you that every unit that we have here in Maya as in grid units will equal to one meter so if I modify this to for example 0.5 you will see the light will be less if I mock it to 2 the light value will increase so you need to adjust this value whenever you have a scene that is too big or too small compared to Maya units the CM2 factor this value just leave it as is unless you have Maya exposure photographic node that comes out to the, as a lens shader to the camera in this case you need to match this value to the value that you have in the lens shader. At the end, I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I'm looking forward to talk to you more.